Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to review and demo a model that I think more people should know about. Because this is a really cool limited edition SG that was a dealer exclusive, I believe by American Musical Supply, better known as AMS. So typically, an SG is a 22 fretted instrument. You can find them in two different pickguard variations. You get your bat wing guard over here and the more 61 style one over here. But SGs being the birth godfather guitar of, you know, metal and all that other good stuff. Thank Tony Iommi for stuff like that. Sometimes people want a little bit more out of their SGs. So they want things like 24 frets, extended scale lengths and stuff. So what I have for you guys today is at least a 24 fret variation. Which, to be honest, Gibson has done a lot of these, from the Zoot Suit series to the Diablos, the 2011 50th Anniversary SG 24 frets, the 2015 SG Specials, even in the current day production like the SG Modern and the High Performance series, or even signature guitars like the Gary Clark Jr. or the Faux Buckethead SG better known as the baritone SG. The thing that all of those guitars have in common is making an SG a 24 fret instrument. It squeezes that neck pickup down into a different location and it messes with the pickup arrangement. This particular guitar right here doesn't do that. So that's why I think more people should know and talk about this beautiful creation by AMS, most popularly done in 2014 and 2015, but a bit more on that in a minute. So there we go. Let's take a look at this thing. I've been hunting one of these things and finally one showed up at the appropriate price that I can review and document it here. So you're going to notice this is a 24 fret SG, so that's pretty cool. But the pickup spacing looks about correct, right? But you might also notice that, oh, <laughs> we've got a Firebird pickup in here. So that was their ingenious solution in order to give you the same pickup spacing in between them all. Well, technically this pickup might still be slightly further spaced down than it normally would be, but since this is a smaller pickup as compared to our humbucker down here, it, it, it looks about right. Most people look at these things that they don't even realize that somebody's played with our pickups here. But the other thing you're going to notice is that our bridge pickup has no exposed pole pieces on it, you know, kind of like the Tony Iommi series of signature pickups. So the 2014-2015 run actually came in two different colors. You can find the sweet ebony finish like this one, and then you can also find cherry. So outside of 24 frets and weird pickup combination here, there's not too much more to talk about on this one, except for this, we get coil splitting on this as well. So you just have a whole bunch of tonal opportunities in here. But in researching this guitar, I actually found out there was a run that predates this one that I had no idea about. Okay, so the year was 2011, apparently. It was the first time that AMS did this exclusive run. The Tony Iommi SG was just discontinued. So what they came out with was something very similar to this. It was only offered in an ebony finish but our pickups were different that time. True to form, those actually have the Tony Iommi pickups, whereas this one right here is supposed to be a 57 Classic. We'll verify that on the workbench. And apparently the neck pickup was a mini humbucker. Now, technically, a Firebird pickup and a mini humbucker pickup, they look similar, but they're not built the same. So despite not having the pole pieces, it might have just been kind of similar to what we saw in like some of those low end, like maybe the 70s tributes, I think we saw them there, and a few other ones. So that might have been more of a leftover part guitar because there was also a 24 fret SG that I documented at one point in time that had that whole 50th anniversary banner on the headstock so it might have just been like repurposing some of those old used parts and then selling it as a dealer exclusive but now that I know that is also out there I kind of want to document one of those too because the pickups are just completely different so nobody talks about this SG but they should because of all of these cool reasons now this particular one looks like it comes with an error correct case our serial number dates it to 2014, so that's cool. But do we have any case candy left with this bad boy? Nah, unfortunately not. But it's one of the nice Costa Rican-made USA cases. And it's it's got a good heft to it, but it's not the heaviest Costa Rican case. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and throw this beautiful, unique SG onto the workbench, and then we'll take a look at its individual parts and specs. Inside our 24 fret SG, I mean, besides this one, it's probably the SG baritone that pulls it off the best because that extended scale length makes the pickups be about the same distance apart, which according to my multimeter is about two and a quarter inches. Looks like a regular SG would be about 2.1 inches. But this is a Captain Kirk Douglas SG, so you can see where on 24 frets they extend the fretboard here, they just 
have the pick guard there. So normally the bat wing style guards, they don't have the neck cutting into it. They're flat at the top. So that's what makes that all different. Well, let's get into the underside here. So the neck pickup cavity looks like this. You can see it's got kind of more of a transitional neck tendon on here. Then our bridge pickup cavity actually got masked off so you can read this. SG looks like 14A. And now the backside of the pickups. I actually had somebody sell me one of these 57 classic pickups out of one of these once. And it was ever since that day when I figured out, hey, these things are pretty interesting that I wanted to document one that was stock and original. But the neck pickup does indeed read Rhythm Firebird. So this is a true Firebird pickup in this one. Whereas last time it was more of a traditional mini humbucker that just apparently didn't have the pole pieces exposed. I'll have to tear one of those versions apart just to verify that that is 100% accurate. Because sometimes marketing materials aren't right and you have to tear them apart to find out. But as far as our readout, bridge pickup is 7.93k ohms, the neck position 15.83, and middle position for fun here, 5.28. And I guess for some additional fun, you can also split it and you should get about half as much. About four in the bridge, eight in the neck, and two and a half in the middle. As far as the bridge and tailpiece goes, it's pretty basic stuff for Gibson USA. I believe they're making the hardware out of Zamac, or however it's pronounced, but it's Advanced Plague Incorporated branded, as is the tailpiece, and it's full weight. I guess now that I know that there was an initial run on this, I much would have rather preferred to document the cherry color since it wasn't available the first time. But Gibson's been catching some real flack lately about not grain filling their mahogany. But they've been doing it this way for such a long time, I can actually see the wood grain here. I guess it just depends on what you're really expecting out of a finish. The bad thing about nitro finishes is sometimes you can start to see seam line showing. This one has a pretty visible seam line right there. Now, is the guitar cracking apart? No, it's just occasionally you can see that seam line if you're really looking for it in the light. As far as our knobs, we've got the black reflectors with the chrome tops that tell us two volumes, two tones, one for each pickup. And again, it's a push-pull pot for each of the bridge and neck pickup for your split. As far as the condition goes, after cleaning it up, I, I noticed like a small dip in the finish right here, and then there's a couple of scratches by the output jack. And you've got some pretty heavy scratches on the pick card that I was unable to get off. There is a small dent in our neck pickup, which makes me think I've actually seen this one be for sale before, because I vividly remember one of these being for sale before that had like that same dent. Another common area on SGs that you'll see like some imperfections is right by the neck join. I've yet to see one that doesn't have lines like that around it. Generally, nothing to worry about just the way most of them age and even come from the factory. But anyways, let's move on to our neck here. So most SGs stop right here, and then you get to move your pick guard up, or you have a tendon cover, but some SGs extend to the full two octave scale length. Now me as a player, I could care less if a guitar has 22 or 24 frets, unless I'm trying to cover a song and it's like, ah oh, man, there's a 23rd fret, my guitar doesn't have that. I remember running into that when I was younger. As far as the inlays go, they're made out of the acrylic material, and I just polished up these frets, so they're looking good. But interestingly enough, they do stop the inlays after the regular positioning. But it's still a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length and your standard 12 inch fretboard radius. It has a nut that measures 1.68 inches. 12th fret, 2.15. First fret neck depth of 0.83 and 0.96 by the 12th. It's not the skinniest SG neck out there. There's what the neck profile looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret. Definitely a nice C-shaped neck. It's got that wideness that a lot of the 61 reissues are known for, but since it's a little bit deeper on the back here, it doesn't feel as jarring in my opinion. This is a very nice neck profile. Headstock time. We've got the Mother of Pearl crown inlay and the Mother of Pearl Gibson logo. Gluson style tuners that we'll look at on the back. And here's what that truss rod looks like. Perfect condition, mahogany neck. And just a regular SG cover. Would have been cool if it said SG24 in a similar font though. Moving on to the backside here, after a little bit of cleaning, it's looking pretty nice. We do have some buckle worming on the back though, so it was definitely used. And that seam line on the back is also showing, but this thing's too reflective to really show it to you, but you can kind of see it right there. But hey, now get this. So we actually have hand-wired pots in here, which is nice, because 2014s can come with the PCB systems, but they have the date 2-29-2014. 2014. Must have been a leap year. You'll occasionally see that, and then that's the signature of the employee. Maybe in 20, 30 years, we'll be interviewing that guy and learning his tales, kind of like we do the Leonard family yet today. But look how tall those push-pull pots are in here. They're actually too tall for this particular cavity. So a lot of times when you have a push-pull pot SG, they'll actually make the body slightly thicker. Otherwise, they just bend these prongs down and they really force these covers on. I mean, it's so much that there's actually a slight bulge to it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Well, that's how they did it in the year 2014. 
I believe this is also the initial year of the large strap buttons. It was somewhere close to here is when I remember first seeing these things get introduced. Basically a regular strap button with a larger dome, so somewhere in between a strap lock and a regular strap. Moving up the back side of the neck, everything's looking pretty good on this one. I don't see any like major scratches, nicks or dings. However, up here, it is apparent that somebody left a clip-on tuner on this for an extended period of time because it left an impression in the finish. So my guess is under black light, we're gonna see that glow and then like an area on the headstock, which thankfully didn't get marred up quite as bad. So 2014 model with the old style serial number on this one. Cause I believe a lot of the 2014s actually had the 14 leading digits, did they not? So that's kind of cool. And we have our Clusen Deluxe tuners on this particular one. Being a fairly newer guitar, I wasn't expecting to see much under black light, but you can see the finish now is starting to glow just a tad. Nothing too much, but a nice light green glow, so we know it hasn't been refinished. What I'm most interested in is the face of the headstock here. And surprisingly enough, we do not see any clip-on tuner mark up here. Okay, so that tells me it was a nitro-safe rubber, but it gripped the headstock too much. That's about the best outcome you could hope for. Everything's looking nice on this one. But especially black SGs, you gotta watch around the neck repair areas and heal. But yeah, that one looks good to me. It just took a different lighting angle to be able to see it. I was really looking on the workbench too. But taking the Instagram photos, I was able to see it. It's right there, right around the O. Generally invisible at all times, unless you just happen to get the light on it. And not that I'm complaining too much here, but this was sold to me as mint condition. Some people's definition of mint is, you know, Nowhere near what it should be. <laughs> All said and done, this one weighs about six pounds, six ounces on my scale. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I think this is just such a fascinating sounding SG. So this Firebird pickup is just not what you normally get in here. So we'll take some additional time to take a look at that one using a pick this time. <laughs> Now use the other voicing. I've honestly never had a Firebird pickup that could be, you know, manipulated like this one. I'm not sure if it's technically a split or a tap or whatever they're doing, but it's definitely an interesting sound. pickup after you've been playing on this for so long it's so nice and juicy you switch to this it's almost too bright on the clean channel you can also split that and where it really gets interesting is you can blend the two with the middle position
got such a great lead tone to it. It's always my go-to riff to test if a guitar gets muddy, and this one, there's no mud at all. That just cuts straight through it. You can also split it for the more percussive sounds. Now let's hear how the Firebird goes. some interesting tones there. It's got a very nice fullness to it. It gets a little bit muddy sometimes depending on your settings. Still perfectly usable, but if you go to the, your second voicing, that's thinner. Kind of gets you that angry telly I was talking about earlier. Then you can play around in the middle position too. We gotta end this demo playing something you can only do on this SG. Now that we know all about the SG Standard 24, what are my final thoughts and opinions on this piece? I am so glad this thing lived up to its expectations, because I've been wanting to review and document one of these for a while, ever since I realized, hey, that's a Firebird pickup in there, that's a freak. But it's such a comfortable guitar. It's not neck divey at all. Now, I mean, if you nudge it, it'll go down, but once you set it, you're pretty good. It's not overly heavy in the body, and a lot of that comes down to them sinking the neck just a little bit further into the guitar. There's a lot of people that swear by these 24 fret SGs because of reasons like that. I found I really like this neck profile is not as thin as most SGs. It's got a little bit more of a rounded carve to it as we saw on the workbench. That works great for me. This doesn't feel quite as flat as other SGs. And above all else, it was just a nice change of pace as to what is normally in a Gibson guitar. Firebird and a unique humbucker, all with the coil splitting abilities. Like at first I was kind of sad that I didn't get the first generation because that doesn't have the coil splits because generally I'm not that big of a fan of them and I hate having to demo all the different tones. I like to just focus on a couple of them and really play. But this one, I actually found myself liking the coil split tones on these things. So I would heavily suggest trying one of these things out. However, they're kind of rare. They're starting to get more expensive on the used market. As we saw in here, it's just a regular SG body outside of being the whole 24 frets. So you could just buy yourself a 24 fret SG and put a mini humbucker pickup in the exact same pickup route. You'll just have to get a custom pick guard, but this would definitely be a mod I would tell you to do because I had a great time with this thing and I hope you guys had a great time checking it out with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.